Good morning, and welcome to another Fast Tracks webinar. My name is Eddie, and in today's webinar, we will go over item and vendor part management in the warehouse. We'll create an item and associate tree information and other parameters with it, as well as creating a vendor part for the item. So to begin, we will go to add item at the bottom of the screen. Enter our item number. We will fill in the information. We'll do the description. If we want to add any notes that would show up on an invoice, we can add it under line notes. We will select what product line it goes to. We can put in the size, the weight. We can give the size a description and a package description of an item. We can put in a number of the package. Um, for example, if the cigar is a is a five pack, we can put five in the number of package. We have the option here to default to uh, add sales tax to the item. Uh, this normally is only used if is it going to be an item that's not going to be resold. We can go under categories and we can create different categories for the new items. So on this one, I'm gonna give it a major category of cigar. Down in the cost and price information box, we can give the manufacturer list cost of the item. We can set the default price of what we sell it to our customers for. We can put the manufacturer suggested retail price. The last cost and average cost will be populated once you receive the item in. For now, when we save it, it'll just end up being zero for both because we have not received it as of yet. Under other information, we have minimum order quantity. This is for when your customers are ordering the item. It sets it to they have to order X amount before they can order. So in this case, we will set this to two. For max order quantity, this is the maximum amount they can purchase at one time. We will set this to five. So now when creating an order, if somebody orders less than two, it'll tell us that they cannot order that because the minimum is not met. If they order more than five, it'll tell us that the maximum has been reached. And once we have all the information entered in, we will come down to the bottom and hit Save Item. And it tells us our item has been added. We can also create an item package for the item. This is used for basically doing if you have a single. So say if my cigars had five in a pack, if I wanted to sell a single cigar, I could create an item package for just the one cigar. To do so, I would go to Add Package. I'll give it a unique number. On the description, I'm going to notate this as a single. We let it know that it is a partial. It's not a full, it is a partial since it is a single. And there is five units in this package. And I will save that. The next thing we'd want to do is assign a UPC for the item. 
So under UPC Assign, I can click Add UPC and type in the UPC number for it. And then also select this UPC belongs to a package and select the package it belongs to and hit Save. But in this example, I'm just going to hit Auto Create. And it'll let me know that this UPC has now been assigned to the item. Now, if this is part of a package, I can go in, edit this UPC, and say that it does belong to a package, and this would now be for the single unit. If an item is a item that is to be reported to MSA, you go to MSA information, you check the box that it is an MSA item, you enter the category number for MSA, how many sticks or cans the item is, the MSA description, and if it is an MSA shipper or if it is a promo, and if it is a promo, you enter the promo code here. Once you have that information filled out, we would go back to item setup and hit save item. Now to add a vendor part to our item, we will come to the bottom right under vendor parts. We will click add part, select our vendor, give it the part number, we will then put in the cost of the item and how many sellable units we receive when we receive this vendor part. Since we have yet to create a vendor part for this item, I am going to make this the primary vendor part. If I was to have another vendor that I received this item from, when I went to add part, I would not want it to be the, vend the primary vendor part because my first vendor is the one that I normally receive it from. So I would just uncheck the box and save. Also with our categories, these are customizable for whatever best suits your warehouse. The way we can customize these is if we go to Maintenance, into Settings, and then to Personalization, we can change what our category labels are. Once you fill this out, you would come and hit Save Settings, and then that would then show in your item maintenance as your categories. All right, there is a second way that you can add items in Warehouse, and that is by simply typing in the item number to see if it exists already or not. In this case, it does not, and it asks you if you want to add the item. I will click Yes. And again, I will just fill out my information for it. So once I have the basics filled in, the manufacturer list cost and the default price and the product line and the description of the item, I can come down and hit save. And now this item has been, been created. Also an alternate way to do a vendor part, instead of coming to vendor parts down on the bottom of the screen, we can come up to the vendor parts tab. 
we would come down to the bottom and tell it to add part. We would select our vendor. We will enter our item number and press enter. This brings up our description of the item. We'll put our vendor part number for it and our cost. And since this is the only vendor part we have for this item, we will make this a primary vendor part. Now I can come and hit save part. And as you can see, we now have a vendor part for our new item 4. All right, that covers item and vendor part management in Warehouse. If you would like to, to view this webinar again or any of our previous webinars, you can go to our website and all of our previous webinars are on the website. So you can either download or stream from the website to view. Thank you and have a good day.